curves in the railway track range in radius from the very tight to the huge. If I was going to give you these two handles joined by some wire, would you be able to find out the radius of a curve for me? But how can that be possible? I hear you ask. That curve is huge. It will need a full survey to find out its radius. Incorrect. Step in, Hallard. Well, not quite, as I couldn't actually find a picture of Emile Hallard, who developed this technique, that uses those handles. Let's take a step back. Curves are the way the track changes direction in the horizontal plane. They allow the direction of the track to be changed to avoid obstacles or to reach a destination. The radius of a curve is its key attribute. As a track engineer, you'll need to know it for calculating cant and cant deficiency, working out the maximum speed a train can travel on a curve, working out transition lengths into and out of a curve, determining if check rails are required or other mitigations of derailment risk. And also, you can change or restore the curve radius with slewing. Are you confused by some of these terms? Sign up to my email list at the link in the top right hand corner or the description below to get your free copy of my Guide to Cant ebook. There is also my Horizontal Alignment ebook that will cover all of these topics. So I think you get it. Knowing the radius is pretty critical. And the good news is it can be found. And while it can be found with a full survey team, with survey kit and some interpretation on a suitable computer program, it can also be found with the humble pieces of equipment I showed you at the start of this video. The Hallard handles. Stretch the wire out, hold the handles against the rail, and take the measurement of how far the wire is from the rail. This little measurement, known as a verse sign, remember that, tells you the curve radius. But how? It's all a matter of geometry. In the short and brief way that technical textbooks would put it, Hallard is determining the track alignment through measuring the offsets from a cord to the running edge of the rail at the centres of successive overlapping cords laid out along the outer or high rail of the surveyed track. Got that? Simple, isn't it? Yeah, right. Let's get those geometry hats on and the shapes out for this one. So, a curve is part of a circle, technically an arc. Let's complete the circle. A chord is a straight line that connects two points on the circumference of a circle. Half of this length is known as a half chord. When it comes to track surveying, it is normal to use a fixed chord length such as 20 metres, which in turn gives half chords of 10 metres. This will be marked out on site in chalk on one of the rails. So, now we have a number of points and lines. Let's give these some letters as names to make things easier. We have B and E, which are the ends of our chord. Then we have A, which is our half chord point on the circumference of the circle. Now let's put O at the centre of the circle. Let's draw a line through A and O, then through to the other side of the circle, which gives point C. D is the point this line crosses the chord, at our half chord. Then we have the diameter of the circle, but steady on. If you spent any time around track design or the like, you will know that we never talk in terms of diameters. We always use radius. So let's call this 2R instead, as the diameter is twice the radius. Now we need to add the critical measurement. Remember the verse sign that was the measurement mentioned earlier? Well, here it is. The verse sign, let's call it V, nice and simple, is the distance between point A and point D. But this still doesn't get you the radius. Patience, we are close. So we have these values, points and measurements. We also have some triangles that these lines have created with some right angles. Next, we need to apply what is called geometric mean theorem. Hands up time, I'll not be explaining this theorem in detail, but in the top right hand corner now is a link to a video where someone will explain it much better than I could, so if you want to know more, give it a view. Geometric mean theorem says that the length BD is equal to the square root of the length AD times the length of DC. So let's sub in what we know. We know that BD is half a chord length. So we can put our chord length divided by 2, C over 2. We know AD is our verse sign that we measured on site, the distance between the rail and the wire. As a quick aside, think of one of the handles of the Hallard kit being held at point B and the other at point E. So the line is our wire in reality. Lastly, our line DC. So we know our line AC is our diameter, or 2R. We also know that our line AD, a section of AC, is our verse sign. So DC is 2R minus V. 
Let's have a little rearrange of the terms. So when it comes to track design, the Versine is very small, millimetres, compared to the radius, which is often hundreds of metres, if not thousands. This makes the square value very small, so it is ignored in this case. It's okay because the mathematicians say it is. So, rearrange again, and because we can measure the Versine but want the radius, let's make R the subject of the equation. Interestingly, I did find another way to derive this equation, using Pythagorean theorem as well. Check out Wikipedia for that one. So now you can take the verse sign and work out the radius. Remember to keep your units constant. If your radius is in metres, your verse sign needs to be in metres, even if it has been measured on site in millimetres. You'll likely need more than one verse sign. Typically, the measurements are done at overlapping chords, so every half chord point. By doing this, the accuracy is increased, and also local misalignments or deviations can be seen. You can then populate a sheet with your verse sign readings, let Excel work its magic and see the geometry of a curve. So now you know how to take these handles, go out on track and come back with a radius of a curve. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. Don't forget to check out the Guide to Cant ebook by signing up to the email list. Drop any questions or queries in the comments below. And if you want to see more of my upcoming videos, do click that subscribe button.